There she is, all back to stock. I told you I like that stock look. I even shaved the targa. We just molded it in. It's cool, right? Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. What is up? Matt Pratt here. What are we gonna work on today? We're actually gonna work on the Supra. Yeah, I got a text message from the guys at Freed Engineering and we now have an ECU and a wiring harness in. The head is still waiting for it at the machine shop. It sounds like they're pretty busy. Everybody getting their heads done with their stimulus checks or something. Anyways, I mean, it's got to be coming close to be getting done soon. I mean, it's been four weeks. I think it's time that I can get to work on this thing. Like I said, I haven't worked on it in a while because just waiting on parts. So there was really no need to. There's a lot of other stuff I need to get done around here. And, uh, and so this was put on the back burner. But if you remember from the last video, we got that interior looking good. I'm really pumped about that. Um, another thing I'm going to attack is this target top. If you guys remember before, you can see that it's actually carbon fiber. It's just started cracking in the gel coat. I'm gonna try to repair all these cracks and paint this. And I'm also going to salvage maybe a strip of carbon fiber here on the sides. I think that'd be really cool looking. I have this whole thing painted, but the sides still show its original carbon fiber. Now, it's a long shot. I mean, this thing is destroyed, but I have nothing to lose because a friend of mine actually has another target top that we're gonna work out a trade for. He needs his engine bay painted and I'm gonna trade him that target top for it. So this is kind of like an experimental thing. We'll see what it looks like. It's just time that I'll be wasting and that's about it. So why not, right? Uh, but I think it would be really cool if I can save this top and like I said, we'll keep like a little strip of carbon fiber exposed, cleared, you know, I think that'd be really cool for this car. All right, let's stop talking and get to work. All right, I think the best way to tackle all these cracks is to actually dig the cracks out. If I were to just lay fiberglass over the tops of these cracks, there's a chance that the crack could crack through the fiberglass that I lay in there. But if I dig them out a little bit and give something for the fiberglass to lay into, I might have a better chance of it not cracking in the future. So just to show you the fiber, the carbon fiber in this thing so you don't think it's just an ashy fiberglass roof, check this out. And then you can see the carbon fiber in it. So we're gonna try to keep this look just right here. The rest of it we're gonna paint, and I think we can. We do have a couple cracks that are close, um, but it might not be as noticeable. You know, this is a budget build, and I kinda of wanted to refurbish every single piece that was given with the car. Now I do have an extra target top coming, but I think this will be really cool if we can save it. All right, let's start grinding on this sucker. all this crap out you can see we expose some of the cracks as we 
started grinding them down, there isn't a lot of material there, so it ends up cracking even more, which is kind of what we want. We want our fiberglass to really sit in there. I mean, there's a good chance that later down the road, all this material that I'm going to be putting in here is going to shrink and suck into there and it's going to look all wavy. But like I said, this is temporary just to see if we can rock a little bit of carbon fiber on it. But it's kind of what you want to do is you kind of want to like dig it all up and just give something for the fiberglass to sit in there. Like I said, if you lay it over top of it and you sand it all down, you're going to sand the fiberglass too thin. And then as this cracks more, it's going to crack the fiberglass that you laid on top. But if you dig it out a little bit, there's a chance that the fiberglass will actually bite it. More material there to prevent from cracking. So, like I said, it's a shot in the dark. We're gonna try it out. So, let's get some glass in there. That's about what it's going to look like. Uh, it's really, really thin. As you can see, you can kind of see the carbon fiber through it. Uh, like I said, it's just a really, really thin coat. Is it going to hold the cracks down? It might. Is it going to last forever? I doubt it. It'll work for now until that, until I get a chance to do that new top. So yeah, this is what it looks like. I'm just going to let this harden up and then that's when I'm going to buzz this sucker down. looks like a mess and it feels eh, pretty wavy uh, just because I just buzzed it down with this DA so um, anyways it's kind of what you want it to look like you can see the cracks are kind of like filled here and there some that aren't looks like the fiberglass didn't fill it they might poke through later down the road but at least majority of them are filled now this feels really wavy and there is a ton of pinholes in it. So the next step that I'm going to do is actually lay some top coat body filler over top this entire thing. And that's when this job becomes a pain in the butt because then we're going to have to block this thing, the entire thing. Shouldn't take that long. Top coat sands really, really easy. After top coat, we're gonna put some poly primer and then regular primer. So there's definitely a lot of steps to saving this. Uh, you see I have this tape here. I'm gonna keep reapplying it, but it pretty much just shows where I don't want to sand um, or have primer or have filler or anything. I have to preserve this. I'm actually gonna sand it. I actually might do it now, but sand it really smooth. Um, just so that when I clear it, it doesn't look as rough. Let's do that right now and then lay some time. Kind of just jumped into it, ended up putting the mud on and then immediately going into sanding it. With this 100 and some degree day, that mud set up quick. Anyways, that's about what it looks like. Pretty much what the mud is there to do. 
the top coat is to kind of level it out, fill all the pinholes and everything. Remember the fiberglass did the heavy duty work by filling in cracks and stuff. So now it feels good enough to uh, put some polyester primer on there, which is another really heavy duty primer. Uh, then we're gonna block that down too so it's even, so it can even be even more straighter. So, and I think after that, I'm gonna seal it and shoot it. So, of course, when I paint the top side, I'm gonna paint the underside so it all matches. I don't have anything that goes underneath of it, so I'm gonna just paint a body color, but um, yeah. So it looks like, all right, I'm gonna go clean up and go eat. All right, we are back. Got some food in my system. I guess it's time to put this thing in primer. It actually doesn't feel that bad. Hmm. Oh man, I know I gotta clean my booth out. Just to show you guys that I will paint anything for money. <laughs> Here we go, a guy needed some gym equipment that he had custom made. And uh, this is actually a lat machine, a plate loaded lat machine. If you know anything about working out. It's really hard to get these machines and everyone wants an arm and a leg for him so he actually had it made and I shot it. I've actually been painting all of his gym equipment if you've seen in my past videos it's probably been in the background um, and I make them all match so he's got a pretty baller gym. All right let me get this cleaned out and we'll get this roof put in here, this target top put in here and prime. bust out this rust defender this stuff is a super thick polyester primer and I need something really thick to really hold down that bodywork that's on there I just need everything that I can to seal down the cracks and hold it back as long as I can and I think this stuff will be good now this stuff is great at corrosion protection and it's also good at sealing down different types of materials let's say you got body filler fiberglass and primer all poking through this will give it a nice solid surface to paint on psych this stuff is hard as a rock I guess we're going to have to use primer I got some of this left that's empty. Okay, we're not gonna polyester prime it. I just don't have time to. I got the chance of urethane. I know what's gonna happen though. As soon as I bake it at work, urethane. It's gonna crack. Uh, I don't know what we should do. another hard top coming so maybe we'll just chance it maybe I'll just hammer it with a couple good coats of urethane primer and uh, we'll see what happens yeah let's try that sucks this stuff's kind of expensive too that rust defender it's like 200 bucks a gallon compared to the other polyester primers like a hundred dollars a gallon yeah and I was like a little bit more than a quarter of a can, half a can. Bummer, but I didn't close it up right, so from the last time I used it, and uh, it hardened up. What are you gonna do? If I order some now, it'd probably take three or four days to get here, so. We're just gonna chance it. I hate chancing stuff because every time I chance something, it fails, but we got another hard top coming. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prime this and I'm gonna pre-bake it. When I get to work, I'm gonna pre-bake it so it hardens up really, really good. And then I'm gonna buzz it down and shoot it. Uh, if I don't see any cracks coming through with the pre-bake, then I know I'm good to bake it um, You know, after it's painted. Now, it might shrink a little bit more as time goes on sitting in the sun, um, but we'll just deal with that then. So, try to get this part on the road. All right. So the next day, let's check this thing out. Oh, turn some lights on. That looks pretty good. 
looks like it's filled. But like I said, this is gonna shrink. So we're gonna take it to work this morning and I'm gonna bake it a few times uh, just to see if I can get it to shrink up a little more. And then uh, I'm going to paint it. Fresh out of the oven, I have the roof here, and it looks really, really good. I actually like it. Uh, you see the carbon? Let me let me get out in the sun. Hold on one second. All right, here we go. There we go. That looks so much better. You can see how I left just a little carbon lip. And how does the carbon look? With the clear over it, you can still see some hairline scratches. Here's a pretty big one, but I don't care. I don't mind it. I was able to salvage this roof uh, and have kind of like a different look. If you look here, the cracks are like a little worse. It's really hard to see in camera, but it's not really, really noticeable. Some of these cracks go up into here. I probably could have did a better job repairing this, but like I said, I was trying to stay away from here where I actually would save it. I prefer this look. It's worth the little bit of cracking that you can barely see. So uh, everything looks really good. Now I did something different when I painted this roof. What I actually did is I used the same batch of paint that I used to paint the car. Now if you guys have seen in the other videos when I painted the wing, the front bumper, and the rear bumper, I actually mixed up another batch of paint. If you notice, it doesn't really match too well. I have a couple ideas why this really doesn't make sense. I really pay attention to how I mix the paint because I do personally mix it and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have gone so far off that would make such a noticeable difference in color. That was a big one. But what I did do is I mixed the paint up for the Supra and I didn't get a chance to paint it for two weeks. So my paint just sat for two weeks waiting for me to use it. Now maybe that paint sitting toners when they're mixed together, the tints that actually makes the color, 
that make the color. When they're mixed together, sometimes they change. They will fall to the bottom of the mixing cup, whatever. Maybe that happened. It's rare. I've never ran in that situation before. But anyways, I took some of the leftover paint from painting the car and I actually painted the roof. Now, we're gonna see if this color matches better than my bumpers do. And we could take a look at the rear bumper. I feel it looks the worst. Um, you can kind of see like a little bit of a difference there. Sometimes it looks good and then sometimes it's just off. Like I said, it's just that small of a difference. Now I've paid attention to other Supras and there's no bumper that matches perfectly because of the angle changes and the way the metallics reflect at different angles makes the color look like it's off. But for some reason, I didn't feel like that was the case. So we're gonna see in a little bit how this color matches. And let's just hope I don't have a mismatched roof. But it's a gift and a curse, really. And we're back. I had to go get dinner with the family for a little bit. Thank God that I stuck the roof on there real quick because it rained. <laughs> um, I, I definitely don't have the weather seal on here yet. A little bit of rain got in there and ain't never hurt nobody. But it's good because I gotta wipe it down and actually clean the car up a lot. <laughs> uh, but anyways, let's talk about the roof real quick. This color matches, you know, straight up matches. And I discussed earlier why my bumper here, it kind of doesn't match. So, you know, I'm definitely gonna reshoot that bumper. I can't deal with that. It's a little off, but if I can get it to match like this, might as well try. Uh, I can still see some of the cracks peeking through here. It is what it is. This is the only target top that I have at the moment. I might buzz it down and re-clear it. Uh, I'll get rid of this little line here. I might fill that stuff in a little bit. But uh, as of right now, from back here, it actually looks pretty good. And I'm gonna rock it for a little bit. I like the little carbon touch to it. But man, this car looks so clean. When it's clean, right? And after working out here in that 100 degree heat, <laughs> this actually feels pretty good. It's the second time my car's seen rain, but don't worry, it's needed it bad. It's kind of jammed up at the moment. Now that I'm looking at it, I kind of think that if I would have just did a little one like that that swooped in, it would have been a little better, but I don't know, maybe next time. But um. I still like the fact that I have this carbon roof exposed. People can tell that it's carbon fiber and it's also painted and going down the road, it doesn't look like I just have this random black roof. All right, I'm gonna pop this thing off, flip it over. We can put it back together and uh, let's get it installed. All right, so I have a ton of hardware here. These are off the original top. I got these from Kyle, but I actually already have these installed in the car. And the other bolts, uh, they go to screwing the top down but I actually are missing some pieces that go right here. I have this piece, which is uh, an original piece from the original hardtop that kind of goes like that. So I'll still be able to secure the hardtop down. I just don't have what these screws bolt into. So it looks like I'm gonna be on the hunt for that. Maybe I'll get lucky and Toyota actually has it. We'll see.
that part is done. And I'm telling you, man, I love my oven black parts. I think I am, instead of satin blacking things, I'm going to oven black everything. Uh, it looks really good. Oh, I need to put two screws here. After this, we'll be able to put it on the car. Now, I still need something here to mount it to the upper pillars. We know that. Uh, but at least I have this here to latch it. This is supposed to be an Allen key to do this. And it looks a little worn out, like they stripped it. Uh, it is what it is. I have to think of something clever there. Maybe I can like put a lever on there. So even though I painted the underside of this, it doesn't look the greatest because it is fiberglass. Uh, like it wasn't smoothed out and I wasn't going to spend all the time to do that. I'm eventually going to get this covered up with an actual looking headliner. So, but for now, painted will be good. It'll look uniform and I get to show off my oven black parts. Um, anyways, let's get some screws in here and then get it mounted on the car. There we go, a complete carbon roof. I am not mad compared to what this looked like before and then what it looks like now. I could not be mad at that. I'll tell you what, I'm pretty pumped to have salvaged this roof. I'm glad it didn't turn into a piece of trash. Now, it does have a couple cracks coming through. You can barely see them. I'm sure in the next couple weeks it's going to get worse, but that's okay. I'm going to let it shrink up really, really good. And maybe I'll buzz it down and plow a couple more coats of clear on there. Yeah, but for now, having this carbon option is really really cool so let's check out the inside and there we go we don't have a headliner but i tell you what the color match roof painting the inside was a really really good idea i like the way it looks and uh that will do for now eventually i'm going to get a new headliner all of it's all going to be new i'm going to get it redone but right now we got more important things to concentrate on this thing is looking crazy good like I cannot get over the way this car looks like this thing has came such a long way uh, all right I know I have at least 20 minutes of footage recorded here so I got to get on the computer and edit it uh, but before I go I just want to remind you guys to subscribe comment like share lately I have been inconsistent with the videos so Hit that little bell button so you see when a video is coming on. You guys know that I've been having to do a lot of work at home just to keep the lights on around here. But things are picking up. Things are looking good. And I have some cool things in the near future that I'm going to be working on. So, again, you don't want to miss out on that. Hit that subscribe button. Well, enough of watching me. It's time for you to go work on your car of your own. And I'm going to see you all next episode.